Hey, this is Jeremy and welcome to Blender for Designers. Today I'm going to be making a video about how I make tutorial videos. I actually just did a bunch of videos for Mockup 3D, so I have all this set up and I thought I'd show you how it works. I'll in fact go over my whole setup here. Talk about screen capture, which is obviously very important. I'm going to use a program called OBS uh, on the Mac and I'll go over that. I'm going to talk about audio microphone as you can see, and video, which is right here. That's not strictly necessary for a tutorial, but I'll briefly touch on it anyway. And yeah, so let's get started. So as I said, I'm using a program called OBS for screen capture. It's called Open Broadcaster. It's actually designed as a streaming software, not really a screen capture software, but it does a great job of screen capture. Uh, so this is the website. I just, as you can see, you just go to Google and you can find it. This is the actual program itself. And as you see, I'm record it's recording itself right now. So you get this kind of infinite thing. And as you may have noticed, I am actually you know, I'm only recording part of the screen. And let me show you what that looks like. This is my entire full 4K screen. You see, I have a script over here, some files over here, OBS over here. I like to do that to manage. And then the active area is right here. So if I'm going to put Blender, I do it right there. And I can just focus on Blender. And the only problem is, of course, you don't get menus in there. But Blender, the menus are in the program anyway. And I can just tell you what menus I'm using, too. Unfortunately, I really love OBS, but unfortunately, I'm going to try to record what's going on with OBS, and I can't do that with OBS, so I'm going to have to use another program. This is actually one I paid for, but I actually prefer OBS, which is a free program. So this is OBS now without recording itself. It's actually, this is Blender, and this is the full 4K screen. And as you can see, you actually have these scenes here that you can do. So here's the full 4K, here's my cropped, here's video. Obviously, I'm looking at the screen instead of the camera. I should be looking at the camera when I'm on camera, but can't do two things at once. So yeah, and you can see you can arrange the screen in different ways. And this is one of the things I love about OBS. The other, you know, there's a couple of them that I really like. One of them is that you can just, it just saves files right away. You, you do is you can go into settings and then you can go into output and you browse and actually I'm doing screen caps. I did, did some ones in that one, but I'm going to do another folder. Screen caps two, O2 maybe. And then we'll just save files in there. And what's kind of cool is you can save it. I recommend doing pretty high quality because you're just putting on your hard drive. But you know, it'll generate fairly large, but not enormous files, particularly if you're doing screen caps. It's actually the files end up relatively small, at least for video. And then, of course, you can do audio, which I am doing from my special mic. And I'll go over that in a minute. Um, but you can do that from anywhere. And what's really great about OBS is actually this kind of weird advanced setting in audio. And that is... So I'm going to go to advanced audio properties almost off the screen. And I have something called sync offset, which basically means that you can offset the audio by, this is a quarter of a second or 250 milliseconds. And what's really great about that is when, when video, particular video, but also screen captures come in, they often come out with a bit, a bit off sync. Like, I don't know if I can show you the video here and you can, let me, I'm going to talk to the camera right now and I'm going to maybe like clap my hands. And you may see that that's a bit out of sync. And I know it's out of sync when it actually records. So having that offset really, really helps. Um, even with screen captures where it's a little bit less necessary, it's really great to have. Let me show you how I set this whole thing up. What you do is you create a, um, I have a scene collection here where I'm going to, I have sort of scene set up here that I use, but let me show you how to set up a new one. So what you do is you can create a screen capture is actually a display capture. Yeah, it makes source visible. And then, yeah, I'm gonna go, so you have two displays. I have one and zero. You can never have too many monitors, even with an enormous 4K monitor. That's the one I'm using. Now that's the full 4K screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and move right where Blender is. And you can actually see I put little crop marks on uh, my desktop. So actually I'm gonna hide Blender for a minute so I can see the crop marks a little bit better. So I know exactly where I'm aiming for. And then to get audio in there, uh, I'm going to have to have another one, which is an audio input capture. And then I hit OK. And then there I can just select several options. I have way too much audio in, but this is my, that's my preamp. So there we go. And you can see, and then I can set that um, at 
250 milliseconds. So yeah, so actually I'm gonna go ahead and start recording. So now I'm recording twice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, I don't know, put OBS in there, maybe put Blender in there. Yeah, why not? Let's do Blender and let's add a cube and scale it up and then rotate around there and try to get something cool. I don't know, whatever, it doesn't matter. Let me stop recording. And then what I really love about this is you can go into, um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and move over to here, which is actually being recorded by OBS. And I'm actually going to go ahead and bring up Adobe Premiere, which I'm using to edit this. So this is actually the, this is the tutorial I'm editing right now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and bring in ScreenCaps 2. Ah, see, I'm trying to bring in something while it's recording. It's going to, that didn't like that, but that's fine. So I, what's nice is you can just bring this, you know, that just recorded right away. And then I can play this. I'm going to go ahead and start recording. So now I'm recording twice. See, you can see that I'm right there. And I can use all the Adobe Premiere trim functions that was at, that I hit W to, to trim that off. And then let's say, you know, let's say I want to, and I do this a lot in tutorials. Like, let's say I don't want the audio and I just want to kind of go through how I quickly do this. Um, what's great is the Premiere is you can just like, cut that off and then you hit R, which is the, uh, I forget, it's the, stretch, time stretch, and then I can make that go really fast. So if I have just a boring bit that I like want to talk over in VO, I can do that. So now let's talk about audio. The key to audio is clarity. You want to make sure you're well understood. And this is kind of something I struggle with a little bit. Sometimes I pause or say, uh, or, you know, maybe kind of mumble a little bit. I, I work on it. I'm not, I'm not a natural performer, but that's what's great is you can always re-edit and do multiple takes. You know, see, I struggle a little bit with that. So that's, I mean, that's the really important thing. You just want to make sure that you're really understood. And it's good to have a good mic. I have a particularly nice mic, and I'll kind of go over how that works, although it's not the super high-end mic. But just get the mic really close to your face. Make sure you're really understood. I mean, the thing about dialogue, which, what, which is what this is, is that you just really need to be, just hit the mic, really need to be understood. It's more important than quality or resonance or anything like that, um, particularly as you're doing a tutorial and you really need to explain something. So let me go ahead and show you my audio setup here. I'm going to stand up here so you can actually see it. This is my mic. As you can see, it's on a boom arm. And it's actually a shotgun mic, which is a slightly unusual for this kind of situation. Shotgun mic is what is normally used outdoors in video production. It's a very, what they call a directional mic. So you can see that, like, if I talk here, you can hear me really clearly. But if I'm over here, just pretty close distance, but to the side, you really can't hear me nearly as well. And that's really good because I live in Brooklyn, New York, and it's really loud here, and I've, this room is not treated, and so it's very good to only pick up me. Like, there's garbage trucks out there, probably be sirens at some point. Um, yeah, it's very loud. So this is really good for me, and I also just happen to have one of these because I was doing video production, but you don't necessarily need a mic that's that nice. You can see this is actually running into a, a preamp over here that's going to the computer, but... Let me see if I can show you. You just you basically want to make sure that your audio is recorded just clearly. So let me see if I can show you another way of doing this. So you guys don't necessarily need to use such a fancy mic, although again, this is not the fanciest mic you can get. But I actually want to show you. This is just some headphones I have. I got them at like a drugstore, and it's got you know a little mic that you can talk into. But I just want to illustrate that it's you know you can still use something like this. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the audio. So now you hear me coming out of the built-in mic. And it obviously does not sound as good, but you can still hear me, and that's really what's important. In fact, I used this mic, or a very similar one, on my tutorial for opening a box, just because I happen to be traveling. So, you know, the key thing is just to get this really close. Like, if you're trying to do... Uh, let's see if this works. You know, if you're trying to do the built-in mic on your computer, it's unplugged right now, that sounds really bad. But as long as you get the mic reasonably close to you, you should be okay. So to show how where the mic is, is as important as what the mic is, I'm going to go ahead and start recording on that mic, the one on this camera that I'm recording myself with now. And you can hear 
It sounds pretty bad from a distance. But I go close, and it sounds pretty good, even with an on-camera mic. And one more thing I like to do with audio is add a bit of compression. Let me show you. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that thing I just recorded. And one more thing I like to do with audio. Excellent. I am so handsome. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that in here. As you can see, this track is right over here, and that's the audio. And one more thing I like to do with audio. Right. Okay. You've heard that a zillion times. This is what editing is like. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my audio track mixer, and I'm going to go ahead to this track, A1, and I'm going to add... First of all, I'm going to add a special fill right with left, because I only really want to use one of these channels. And I'm going to add a compressor. So I'm going to go to multiband compressor, and I'm just going to use the default, which is broadcast. And what, it, what a compressor does is it takes the quiet parts and makes them louder is basically and so it makes the whole thing louder and more clear so i don't know what a lot of these things do i'm sure audio engineers and musicians and stuff would know what all these things do but i know like i basically just leave it set as default it's a very common thing other programs have different compressors there's hardware compressors as well it's a very common audio thing to do and the other thing you can do is put some what they call eq in it which changes the tones but i don't i don't really mess with that because i kind of like the way this sounds as it is, and I don't want to go too far into that. But a compressor is really nice. In fact, let me show you what that sounds like. This is what it sounds like without compression. This is what it sounds like with compression. So next I want to talk about video. You know, the video of shooting me. Uh, this isn't strictly necessary, of course, for a tutorial, but I've used it for some other things. And it's really great to be able to just take video and import it right into the computer. Now, in this case, I'm going through an SLR, which is why you have this cool out-of-focus background, and you, I look really handsome and everything. Um, you can also, of course, use... Sorry, I'm just going to look at the bottom here. This is my FaceTime camera, or the, uh, the webcam. Uh, as you see, it doesn't look as good. I don't look, nearly as flat I don't look nearly as flattering, and you see all this crap in the background. And that's actually a C-stand, which is blocking some of the light from shining off my head. I don't always do that, but something you can certainly do. Uh, let me go back to this video, and I'll show you how I get this video into the computer. And I use one of these things. Um, and there's other options. This is a Blackmagic Mini Recorder, Ultra Studio Mini Recorder. Um, obviously, I'm not using this one to get the video in, um, because this one is broken. And that's one warning, these are not super, super reliable. Um, I know this is just a really good option for a Mac, because it's got a uh, Thunderbolt cable. And then you also have a HDMI and HDSDI. I use the HDMI, but the HDSDI is for like bigger, fancier cameras. So let's say I had like an Ari Alexa on here. I could be recording myself with an Ari Alexa. Um, yeah, but, uh, but at least I get, you know, a nice DSLR look, which I really like. Uh, and I have a background in photography, so, you know, I care about these things a lot. Um, let me see if I can show you how you get this in using OBS. So going back to OBS, you can see here is the premiere scene I was just looking at, but you can go ahead and add a, we're gonna add a new scene, we're gonna call this video, and then what we can do is we can, well, let's first of all add the audio, which is really important. Uh, or actually what we can do is we can just copy the one I already had. Copy and paste, Command Shift, uh, Command C, Command V, it's just instinct at this point. And then I'm going to go ahead, so then you want to add a video source. So actually, I'm going to start with a, uh, you start with my FaceTime camera, which is the more basic one. Uh, so there we have me. Hi, me. And that's only 720, so I've got to scale it up if I want the full screen. Um, but I don't love that one, so we're going to get rid of that. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And then I'm going to go ahead and add. All right, so what I want to do is I want to go into Video Capture Device, and I want to select... Blackmagic Ultra Studio Mini, and I can use a preset here. Uh, right now it's going to set it to 720, but you can see that you can see me there. I'm not looking uh, at the camera, or I won't be while I'm working on this, so just excuse me for a minute. Uh, so I actually don't want this at 720, it's coming in at 1080, so I'm going to have to go ahead and undo that, and I'm going to want to select 1920 by 1080, and then it's going to make me select the frame rate, which I have set at 23976. I like using 24 frames a second because I'm background and film, and that's just what I'm used to, and I feel like it looks more, a little bit more cinematic. Uh, so, that's good. Sometimes what you have to do with this is you have to 
unplug the HDMI cable. Let me see if I can show you this. So now we have this up here. So yeah, as I was saying, sometimes you have to, as I was saying, sometimes you have to disconnect this HDMI cable to get it to work. Sometimes you don't, just yank it out, yank it in if it's not working for you. Um, so that's pretty much how you would, and then I can start recording here and I can play this just as a video recording. And I can stop. Uh, so yeah, that pretty much does that. So one more thing to mention in video is that in general, you wanna make sure you're looking at the lens. Uh, this, is, this can be tough. I mean, as you saw, I was just doing a bunch of stuff where I had to look down at the screen to do some stuff and had to move away from it and, you know, you had, I had to do it because I'm doing a tutorial setting up video, but it is something you have to be very careful with when you're not doing that. So do, you know, do make sure, you know, it just makes it feel more personal. And this is something, again, I, I'm not always that good at and I kind of struggle with a bit. Um, and this is actually where LCD screens can actually be kind of a little bit weird. So let me show you, you know, let me show you my setup here and I'm going to look away from the screen to do it. So I'm going to see if I can, yeah, this is, this is the camera right here. See if I can get it in screen here. There we go. Yeah, so you can see I actually have the LCD screen tilted away a bit. And I did that intentionally so I'm not looking at it. Um, the other way to deal with that, of course, is the KC Nice. The other way to deal with that, of course, is the Casey Neistat method, which is where you use sunglasses. And there you can go ahead and look at the LCD screen. See, so I'm looking at the Look at the lens, then the LCD screen, then the lens. But if I didn't have my pointer here, you couldn't tell because I'm wearing sunglasses. But it's a little weird to do that indoors. And also I need to see the screen so I can manipulate stuff in Blender with tutorials. So probably not the best idea, but another solution to that. Uh, another thing you got to make sure with video is that you're able to kind of say everything clearly in one take, or at least if you cut away, you're going to have to cut away to... Uh, the screen capture uh, to try to keep it smooth. Now, in YouTube, what they're called jump cuts, which is where you cut from one thing to another. Let me see if I can show you. So there, we just cut a bunch of stuff out and I just did a jump cut. Now that's somewhat acceptable in YouTube, but in general, you can try to avoid it if possible, especially on the same shot. Like if you can cut away to another shot, like let me see if I can show you. Like usually the way you solve jump cuts in video productions, you cut away to another angle but sometimes that's just not an option. Like I dad's happened to set up another camera now for this tutorial, but that's not always an option. So cutting away to another angle, there's actually one more thing I wanna show you about OBS. And that is that it's actually really useful to use as a video monitor. So you can see right here on my screen is me. And I can go ahead and use this on my laptop screen, which is over there as a video monitor, which is actually really nice. So you can use your laptop or my big ass 4K monitor as a video monitor. So that is my video tutorial, my tutorial tutorial. Uh, tell me what you think. Tell me if you have any questions, if you guys have other ideas of what you want to do. Uh, as I said, this is a very specific setup to me and just really what I like to use. So, you know, everyone else has their own different preferences. Um, and of course, I have want to plug my app Mockup 3D. Um, the reason I actually did this is because I was recording some stuff for Mockup 3D, which I'll have add to the channel right now i had actually i've actually been running an ad and then i've been kind of explaining how i create that ad using mockup 3d and those two videos are going to go on the channel probably as soon as this one does um i have been running them unlisted for a bit so take a look and uh, tell me what you think and hope you guys enjoy this thank you